Okay. So I'm mega excited because today I have the amazing Jennifer Kempson from Mama Fur Fur with me and she has kindly agreed to do this interview with me and um, I, as, as with many other people in this YouTube personal finance space, Jennifer was one of the first people we had come across on her channel and she's been sharing absolute life-changing nuggets for a couple of years now. Um, and so she's going to be sharing her journey with us today and I'm going to be asking some questions. So you're in for a treat. But if, you, <laughs> if you're not familiar with uh, Jennifer's channel, and I do try to promote it because it's a good place for people to get the education, uh, financial literacy education, wherever you are in your journey, do check out her channel, which will be below in the description. But I will also let Jennifer do a brief description of herself <laughs> and her channel. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, my name's Jennifer. She said I have a YouTube channel called Mama Furfer in the UK. I am late 30s. Yeah, this year's going to be a big year for me. Two boys and we live up here in Glasgow. And my journey with money has been probably similar to a lot of people. Didn't grow up with a lot of financial education. Parents lived a uh, traditional life. We didn't have debt or anything. And it was over the course of life experiences. I learned about investing, paying off debt, um, side hustles and that's been really a journey of mine for the past six years or so and three years ago I decided to pick up a camera and be one of the the UK voices because I couldn't find anyone that I could relate to I couldn't see a lot of people talking about money in the UK and I thought well it'd be really fun to actually be one of those people and just give it a go and see what I, I could do to help others as I was learning stuff so that's me now three years down the line and it's, I'm, I'm excited to be here on your channel it's wonderful Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so if you're familiar with Jennifer, you may know that she has recently um, left her traditional nine to five and it is very inspirational. And um, I thought we could speak about that today. So one of the first questions I wanted to ask is at which point did you decide, which point did you decide that you wanted to leave your nine to five? And at which point did you see that it was feasible for you to do that? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I suppose for anyone, when we start a journey with doing side hustles or extra income outside of a nine to five job, I think we always hope that it could be another stream of income that's going to be side or comparable to our day job, you know, to make to make a difference. But I don't think I ever assumed it would be my full time job. I think it was always just going to be something I did for fun and thankfully still do find for fun. The the switch for me was, so I really enjoyed the career path I chose. I'm an engineer, an electronics engineer. I went into engineering mainstream, didn't really enjoy it. And I went into IT sales, which I loved managing people, helping people and, and all that kind of stuff. And so in terms of the nine to five job I was doing, I had flexibility for my family. I could pretty much decide my hours. It was a good paying job. It paid, you know, the household income so much so, you know, that two years ago, my husband left the corporate world and we went down to a single wage with the balance of everything. I think it was, though, when you start to feel and develop the different side hustles and additional incomes as well as maybe one initial, initial one. So you've got your day job, you might do something on the side. And I think when you start to get a passion for adding multiple ones after that oh I could do books oh I could do courses oh I could do this and investing all that you suddenly think about where is my time best spent for joy and I think over the past 18 months really mama for for my business and YouTube and everything that goes on with it it was making comparable money to my day job and then in the past year it's vast, you know, it's overtook that vastly. And I think once you get to those stages, for me personally, I had to see that happen. I had to see it, okay, this and other incomes is starting to make a difference, a real difference. Where do you want to spend your time, Jennifer? And I think with having two young boys, when I started out with money, the goal was always to have as much freedom over my time because I never wanted to look back, particularly as a mother and a female, I wanted to look back and say, I don't have any regrets about where I chose to put my time. Um, and I think that was it that I felt towards the end there. Business, Mama Fur Fur is really good and I love it and it's busy, but I'm busy of my choosing. And the day job was quite demanding. 
And I just, I think I made the, the choice that I knew that my day job was getting filtered out. And so it was more a case of, well, when do you feel ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and for that, I had to have a good runway, I call it. So we built up a good buffer in our business that, you know, if we needed six months or a year, if I decided I wanted to write a couple of books and take the year off, we'd have that as well. So I think it's highly personal. And I don't, I think it's wrong also when people say, oh, you know, quit your job and just go for it. You know, don't have any income. I, I, I can't relate to that. So for me, it had to be comparable to my day job because life shouldn't suffer as a result, really, in my eyes. A hundred percent. And that's, you, that was just packed with goodness because, <laughs> you know, no, seriously, in terms of you do see sometimes people encouraging to just mm. quit your job and you'll figure it out. And I just think that is, um, that can be irresponsible. If you don't set yourself mm. up in a certain way, um, I don't know if it's, it should be recommended that you automatically mm. quit your job. So as you said, you had that runway, you started to see that there was a, a shift in the income yeah. and you, you built an emergency fund, like you had things in place so that your family wouldn't crumble if the yeah, business exactly didn't go as you expected and I think in that you now can probably really focus on Mama Furfo without the stress of mm. oh, can we pay our bills and oh if, if we don't make the money this month are we going to have to think about how we jig around our money you've got yeah, the exactly. mental capacity to just focus on your business and mm. and that was a huge the big shift actually from working a nine-to-five job so I've worked in a job since I left university at 23 so that is you know 16 years I've been doing the nine-to-five thing and I think I've I've actually had to learn to time manage differently now because there's nobody telling me to get up there's nobody telling me to make a video there's nobody telling me to create you have to have your own boss instinct in you and say, okay, I, I really feel inspired to get up today and create this video or to write this piece of content. And I think you're also learning to tune into different parts of your creative nature then rather than somebody telling you what to do or being driven by customers, what they want. You're going, actually, I feel led. I feel intuitive to do this now. It, it certainly has taken, I need to get used to it, but you know, an example is our little one has got just not feeling right today, nothing major, just, and, you know, I don't have to worry about management of, okay, make sure they're upstairs while I do business calls or conference calls or, and I think that's where you start to see actually, yeah, I made the right choice because there's no wrong choices in life. You, you can't muck it up. You'll just recover anyway. So <laughs> it's true. It's so true. And that ties into my next question, which you're You've kind of you've kind of answered, but what is your so far? What is your favorite part of life post the nine to five? Um, talking about the flexibility is huge because that's what everyone's really looking for. I also am genuinely enjoying having the flexibility with my headspace as well. So I I think when you've got additional pressures that you feel responsible for, it's just then. A little bit less pressure and what you know you've not got so many people to answer to if you imagine you've got a day job you've got your side hustle you're trying to do this trying, and then just to have that ease back is really quite beautiful I also I just love the fact that over three like past three years I could never have predicted like being here three years later and I shared a video recently on my channel about some of the concepts that really kick-started before I left my job, you know, learning about these key concepts of you don't have to earn money by your time only, you can earn it passively. Also, design life based on value, not your income, which I think is huge. We see a lot of people thinking, oh, you know, if I earn this amount of money and then eventually I can go part-time or eventually I can do this. Our household dropped by 50% when my husband left the corporate world, but it was a better standard of living. And so for me, who cares if there's not X amount in the bank, <laughs> we got to be together. So I think there's a, lo a lot of things like that that really do help. And when you get on that journey, it's just all these lovely little jigsaw puzzles I can now appreciate as part of it and also still know that I'm still figuring it out even more so I'm just at the start of what lies ahead so it's really fun so far. It sounds amazing and it's even quite hard for me as someone who obviously works a nine-to-five um, it's quite hard for me to imagine having that flexibility and that's mm. the bit that 
seems, um, you know, such a novel. I just can't imagine waking up on a daily basis and thinking I can pretty much design my day. And I think it's incredible. It's something that I'm working towards eventually, but you know, that, that flexibility is, you can't put a price on that. <laughs> no, you can't. That's the point, isn't it? We're all really trying can't. to get the, the money to make it happen. But, yeah. and I think that is so true. I think you have to sit back and, and do the sums in a little bit, have to realize. So like we talked about when I left my job in January, I had this runway in our business account. We've built it up. So I know that we're not penny pinching right from the word go. There's space to breathe. I think you equally should do that in your personal life. If you feel like, let's say, maybe you want to go part-time as step one, or, you know, switch job as step one, write the numbers that you can actually make that a reality. Like t we tend to have this thing as humans where we make it touchy-feely, or oh, I'll feel like it's okay that I can do this or it, it's, define that. What is the number? And I think what happens is you often get to that number and you go, oh, I don't know if I'm quite ready yet. And I think that's the test of faith because yeah. you set that number believing that that could be achievable and believing it's right. And then it allows you to work on the triggers that maybe make you not feel comfortable. So I would, like in your circumstance, I would actually name it. What mm -hmm. do you need to happen? Because in my experience, it happens far quicker than you can ever imagine. The moment you have a goal, you know this, the world seems to give you opportunities. Yeah. There's that secret sauce that comes in that you know that you can't, a bit of grace mixed in there yeah, that you absolutely. can't predict. So I, yeah, I, I, as I say, I wouldn't have thought the world would be like this in three years. So it's incredible. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, so, you know, you've kind of, this is, this is, a, <laughs> you're, you're answering my questions before I ask, ask them, but it's amazing. I'm going to put you on the spot. You've got to ask more questions. <laughs> I, know, I know, but I was going to ask, what would be your um, three top tips for someone who is considering changing their career trajectory or going forward mm. with their own business? You've kind of spoke about some of these tips already, but if you were to yeah. say, okay, these are the top three things. What would they mm. be? Oh, you'll probably be able to call these as well. And no doubt what you do. Multiple incomes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely multiple incomes. Focus on that because that's your route. That's your fast track route. Okay. So you've got your day job. Let's say you have to think about, okay, if I'm to put in an hour of effort once a day, what can I do to drive passive, semi-passive incomes as best I can? So, you know, as an av like average person, that's what we are. Think about investing. That's a really beautiful passive income, right? We, one box ticked. I don't need to do anything apart from put money aside every month. Excellent. That is so simple. Yeah. The second thing is monetize something you love to do. So do you take pictures? You can sell your pictures as stock. Do you enjoy reading audio books? You know, you could actually speak books and do stuff like that and people would buy them. You could write books, you could do courses, you could do YouTube, you could do, you know, there's so many different things. And I think, especially as people starting out on this journey that they do build incomes, the more, you know, variety that you have that feels within your creativity, like different flavors of ways that you can, you know, help people is really great. And that's where actually these little amounts very quickly then become a huge amount and a difference in your life. If you if you focus maybe on only one thing until it gets to a certain amount, I think sometimes you miss an opportunity to then grow yeah. multiple things at the same time. So that would probably be my first top tip. Think about multiple ways because that's going to speed things up. The second is we talked about a runway. I call it a runway. So it's basically a buffer. And whether that be that you have, I don't call it an emergency fund. I call it a new opportunities fund. So I like to flip the yeah. script yeah. Um, because I don't, I don't want a surprise. I don't want an emergency <laughs> in my life. I want to know it's coming. You see, that's the script flip there. Um, so that's that three months, six months, whatever you want of, you know, your expenses. And it's for you to decide, hopefully, to change life. So it could be you decide to go traveling. It could be you leave your job. It could be whatever new opportunity you're going to create with that money. That's the second thing. The third thing is daily try and invest in yourself because in anything that you want to do, your value in the marketplace is rewarded in terms of what you bring to the time that you give it. So for example, I'm three years down the line of making videos. My hope is if I work on how I deliver videos, how they're edited, the content I'm making, if I'm constantly trying to evolve that. I hopefully I'm better than I was three years ago. 
And I think whatever you choose to do, keep that edge, keep working on it, read good books, listen to the good podcast, keep that edge. You're not in a competition with anyone else, just yourself. So that would really be my top three. And I'm going to ask you actually, Dee, which one or what extra would you, if you're on this journey, you're on the same journey that I've been on, what would you say? Is there anything missing or is there something else that you find just is quite unique to particularly the lifestyle that you want to create? Oh, I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm making it tough for you. (laughs) No, it's good. It's good because I need that. But um, I guess I'm going to just tack on to the last point that you made. I think you've made really good points. But for me, it's this constant uh, desire to keep learning and bettering Mm. myself. And I think that for that for me is what's I, I'm seeing things just change in my life along the mm. way and you know obviously I speak about the fire movement on my channel and you know you also speak about the fire movement on your channel but one thing that you do say and I appreciate that you do say is that it's not just about reaching that magic number one day 15 yeah. 20 years from now <laughs> you know that just seems so out of touch but it's about yeah. what can you what can you do now and 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 mm. what value can you add to your life now and for me even though I do have a fire number and I'm aware of this in my head um I'm making changes along the way way before I hit mm. that fire number because if it's all about sacrifice now and you know, not really progressing myself and not doing what I enjoy and what yeah, I love, yeah. then, you know, I'm going to be miserable for the next 10, 15 years of my life. And that's not what I want. And no, so, that's not yeah. So I think it's just for me, just I'm constantly just developing my knowledge, um, building my craft, I guess you could say, and just really mm. just developing as a person and as a very new content creator. This is a whole new space for me. <laughs> and a space that I never thought I would be in to be honest mm. um and you know I'm loving it I'm absolutely loving every moment of it and I'm just I'm just developing it I'm developing it mm. and um I'm starting to see opportunities arise yes now that's what I told you about right yeah. that special sauce and I think it's wonderful to have those fire numbers so I will yeah. never dispute that yeah. what you've hit upon there though is sometimes the message can seem like you must suffer now in order for some day in the future and life was never designed there's nowhere that's written that says you have to suffer for 40 or 50 years before you get to somewhere it's all about lifestyle investing so yes you can have this goal amount but flip the script there you've kind of decided okay I have to have investments in order to have this income well what if the world is going to set up for you that you get your mortgage paid and your expenses paid through YouTube every month what if that's the plan for you yeah. right well yeah. you've been so focused on that investment goal that you've missed the opportunities that and I think that's what I was learning like life could have been just that and I need to focus and save and save but I would have missed all these other opportunities that came my way where the world went hello we could get you there quicker yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's definitely about the balance <laughs> such a good point Jennifer honestly yeah it's and thank you for throwing it back at me I, it, was, it was getting me to think um and I, it's funny I was just saying to my husband this weekend in the kitchen I was saying to him I I really appreciate when I watch interviews and the interview the person who's been interviewed throws a question back and mm, I was there you go him, yeah I was just saying this to him and I said it's quite nice it changes the dynamic a bit so it's funny okay. that you've done that <laughs> I wasn't listening in I promise (laughs) (laughs) no but that's great so um now I just wanted to touch on the fact that you in one of your uh recent videos about financial Mm. independence you talk about coast fire yes so this is a, a topic that's not really touched on much you're right this I feel like uh coast fire is kind of breezed over but it is a very important um concept or approach to fire so i was wondering if you could speak to why you chose coast fire or what or or what coast fire is and what it could mean 
Yeah, sure. Um, so cause fire, the concept is basically that similar to a fire number. So fire being you've saved up a, a certain pot of investments where every single year, basically, it will self top up. You can withdraw a little amount of it as income, but the growth will be there that it can keep topping up. So the income's enough to support life right now, but that pot is large enough that it'll keep self generating it for you. Cost fire is a way to look at it so that once you've hit a partial way towards it, then because of the beauty of compound growth and time as factors, your, in, your investments would then continue to build your pot of money as long as you're not going into it, it would continue to grow. And that would mean then at that life point where you get you know, a, a sizable way along, let's say five years down the line or 10 years or 20 years, you could then officially retire. But during that space of time, you could maybe work part time or do something different. The whole point being, you wouldn't really need to consistently add a huge amount more to your investments. Now, obviously, bear in mind, there's inflation. There's also, you know, when we don't get inflation, when it's next to nothing as well. So there's a lot of different yeah. variables that could happen and you can't guarantee, you know, interest growth. But the concept being there might be some point in your journey where you could effectively drop down how much you're investing towards your fire number and instead maybe focus on just paying the bills yeah. and a little bit into your investment. So it's a big switch rather than be focus, invest, save, 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 you know, 50%, 60% saved, 50% invested. You then have a decision time where you're going to say, actually, I'm going to stop investing as heavily and I'm going to now cover the bills but leave it 10 15 20 years so it's kind of the same concept when your pension gives you an estimate of how it's worth how much it's going to be worth in future you know if you go on to pension b or whatever you have it'll say well your pot of money will be worth 100k by the time you're 65 it's that concept it's a prediction it's not it's not a science it's not yeah. there's no way we can absolutely but why I resonated towards it was, just as we've talked about, it, it actually allows you to plan for the future, knowing you have a rough estimate about how life will be. You'll know that you've generated enough income. But the beautiful thing is this point in time where it's kind of like a decision. Mm -hmm. Do I want to save and invest the same way as I have been? Or would I use it as an opportunity, knowing that I'm going to hit fire anyway, could I actually go part time or just work less or move to somewhere that's cheaper? And I really love the power of that because I see a lot of people just talk about financial independence. And also a lot of people are talking about it, haven't achieved it, actually. Yeah. yeah. So this is something we don't touch upon. The people, a lot of the mainstream people we hear saying, oh, fire numbers and da da da, they actually are, are not truly fire. They've actually continued working because <laughs> they're obviously they're teaching us about it for an income, right? So they yeah, haven't yeah. actually they fully retired. And I think that's where the message of fire isn't quite fully what it's meant to be. Fire is meant to be you stop working if you want, right? Mm -hmm. But actually, I think a lot of people within us do want to work. We do want to continue contributing. And so the coast concept allows for that work-life balance to kick in far quicker so that you know that you're going to have financial independence in you know, 10 years or five years or whatever you decide. But again, what you're doing is you're not postponing this event to so far down the line. Yeah. You're actually kind of bringing it into more. So that's one of the reasons I'm passionate because like in the calculation sense, we've hit that number, you know, yeah. when we decide to retire, you know, if we decide if it's in our fifties or whatever, we're good, but it doesn't stop me working. <laughs> right that number is just that I can go oh that's cool that's really yeah. excellent we've done that but it doesn't stop me then paying the bills and making sure I'm adding to my investments it just allows for that flexibility and choice yeah completely and I completely agree with all of that and um, I think as you said people don't actually most people don't actually want to stop working no. and but what most people do want to do is probably change their career or work in something that wouldn't pay the bills the way that their current job does. And, you know, I think this is what FIRE does allow people. Mm. It does allow, mm. it, it gives you that freedom of choice. You know, people, a lot of people don't want to retire early and they get bored mm. in yeah. the traditional sense of retirement, they get bored. If you're just sitting at home every day, you're gonna be terribly bored, but it's just, yeah. the, it's just the freedom to, to choose exactly what it is that you mm. want to do. 
And, you know, when you said about pensions, the interesting, the revelation that I had last year, um, at the end of last year, was that I can, um, within about, maybe about five years from now, I can actually stop contributing to my pension. Which is cost, basically, that's it, right? You can stop and then you put it, exactly. But I never even, I always thought I'd be paying into my pension up until I retire, Mm. When I actually ran the numbers and sat down, mm. I saw that if I, I've got to reach a certain amount, and once I've reached that amount, I can let, literally let it coast until mm. I can take that money out at currently, it will be maybe 58 for me. Until I can, yeah, yeah. Money, I can let it coast and it will grow exponentially during that time. And that's yeah. without me putting any more money in. But what that yeah. would allow me to do, as you said, is take that money that I contribute currently every month to my pension, and put it towards bills or whatever it is in my life yeah yeah and that gives you a bit more freedom you know and obviously there is a balance with yeah. you need to be mindful of inflation there's no guarantees yeah. of rate return so yeah. i would always say even though you might hit the number in some way you've got to be actively managing and saying well actually yeah. we've had inflation of this amount so actually i'm yeah. going but it's it's much smaller compared to then having to commit 50 percent or 60 yeah. percent of your age and ultimately i think the fire movement is becoming so popular is because it gives people a sense of hope you know hope that actually i can do something different and I hope you and I and lots of other people will kind of champion this. You don't need some event to give you hope in life. You can, like the hope's there regardless. I, I firmly believe that if more people, you know, started sharing their talents and services that they have, I can't draw, for example, I'm rubbish at drawing. Same. But I, I love the fact that there's other people who are gifted. Mm-hmm. So I think the more we got used to actually sharing our talents and getting value from what we've been, you know, what we've been given in life to do, I think then again, the switch would be rather than just, I need to, you know, I, I need to leave this nine to five job as quickly as I can. It would then be actually, oh, I could get paid for something I love to do. And it's safe for me to do that, which is really what we were kind of doing. We're, this yeah. is all good yeah. fun and, and we get paid in some yeah. way to have fun. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's so true. It's such a, it's a good point. But yeah, you do, to tack on to what you were saying before, you do need to account for inflation and all those other variables. Uh, there's a lot, yeah, it's not there's as straight cut as hit yeah. this number. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's clear. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, um, so I was going to now ask, what are your favorite resources in finding out about the fire movement when you started? What would you say helped you to understand Ooh. about fire? Um, well, when I first started, I was I loved all the original books like Tony Robbins' Money Master the Game. That's a classic. There's a, a good book that's a, a UK version called Reset by David Sawyer. He's okay. based in Glasgow right now. He's a really nice guy. And that's, again, an investing UK book for the kind of fire movement aspect. Um, I found, though, probably like you, there was a lot more YouTube and blogs mm-hmm. with people talking about it. So, like, I would, and there's so many more now than there ever yeah. has been. But, yeah, just, you know, have a good search. I love the Humble Penny. Ken and Mary mm-hmm. in the UK are great. Um, and obviously they they are a great example of they've got financial independence not through investments directly lots of different avenues but equally they're still doing things that they love so that kind of is a good example that you yeah. see people can have security but equally they keep working and contributing um I'm trying to think of some other books that are really great there's so many actually there's always it's books very popping yeah, <laughs> any no. kind of book about the stock market I think you get the hint of financial freedom Absolutely. anyway as well 100 percent. okay great um so I'm going to let me just see sorry I had a quite quite a few questions but you've answered as I said some of them <laughs> so I've just gonna look efficient (laughs) yes super efficient i love it um oh the four pillars of spending that you talk about on your channel yes yes love that love that i it would be great if you could touch on that briefly and why you think the fourth pillar in particular Mm. is so important Mm, absolutely okay so the four pillars of money if you've watched my channel i talk about the money stacks method which is a budgeting system which is very personal and everyone creates their own structure to it which is great but I believe with money there's there's four pillars that build your foundations and it's getting those combination that build your stronghold with your wealth so it's spending well yes you are allowed to spend your money on things that add value and joy there we go it's all good and saving well so saving I would mean very short-term and long-term goals so that could be 
you know, if you want a home, if you want a mortgage, if you want to travel, if you want an education, it's those very much your goals that matter and would really add value to your life. Um, investing well, so we're talking about, so investing is really kind of putting your money or resources for tomorrow in some way. So I would say that's investing in yourself. So business ideas, your knowledge, pensions, investment ISAs, thinking about how can I make money and also just better use my time in future. That's the third pillar. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth one, which I believe without it, you're, you're kind of stopping the flow of money into yourself is giving the giving pillar. And I'm being honest, that's the one that seems to trigger people the most on my channel. That is definitely a conversation starter. And I love it. I love being someone who's starting those kind of conversations. But I believe money is a resource to use. I don't believe it's something that should control us. Um, and obviously, you know, my background is we had £24,000 worth of consumer debt, we paid it all off. So I've, I've felt the pain of having, you know, feeling stuck. But this was something that changed our relationship with money the moment we started doing it. And if you watch my channel, I share how much we give every month. You know, it, it's just, you can see it, you know what we're doing. Money as a resource, it comes to us, but I believe we have to send it out as well. And I think the, the habit of giving is the one that people struggle with mm -hmm. because we can be stuck in this mindset of it's all mine. So it comes in, we receive it, but I, I can't let it go because it's all I have. This is all I'll ever have access to. And that's not true. Money is created. Money's unlimited. The bank print money, for goodness sake. They can do whatever they want, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, I kind of think it's like oxygen you get it and then equally you've got to exhale it and even if you can commit to one pound or five pounds a month you're then leaving a ripple effect you've looked after yourself with your saving spending and your investing goals you then get to affect maybe one other life in this world by giving in some way and it can be you give to a charity or a church or something you believe in it could even be just buying something with that to give as a gift yeah. you just feel inspired and I then think it breaks down the mindset of the lack and kind of this is all mine. And the moment as well that I started to do this and we did it with our family, when things were tight, I can't explain the amount of money that seemed to then just suddenly pour out on our lives. It, it, it just dramatically changed. And I, I'm a, I actually believe in old school wisdom. It's almost like, you know, um, it's kind of a minimum of 10% should be passed back into the world. So that's personally what we go by and then we give additional donations as we see, right? And it's something I feel so strongly about that we do it from our business as well. So it's not just our personal money because I want my business to bless other yeah, people. Absolutely. People are blessing me with their money. I want yeah. to use it for good. Um, and something that's touched our life this year, um, we've been able to help there's four of us in our family up here. We've been able to help another four people for a whole year so far in the past wow. three months. So we have recently partnered with a homeless charity, some of our donations, and that's four people who've been taken off the streets who will have a house oh and food God. and education for a year. And I hope that we continue to, do, I want to do even more things like that. So I would really say if, it feels like this one pillar could trigger you, you know, like, I don't know if I could do it, Jennifer. It's going to be harder to give away a hundred thousand pounds out of when you earn a million than it is from one pound out of 10, okay? Yeah. So the reason that all four pillars, I believe set you up for wealth is because it's all four habits. If you start today, you're just setting your building, your foundation up to get stronger and stronger because I do believe good people when they have good money do incredible things. You know, that's when you see the ripple effect helping communities and countries and local areas. Um, so, yeah, and I know you're passionate about this. This is your sweet spot as well, but it's a game changer. So yeah. I don't know, is there anything like you could maybe touch upon where you've yeah. seen the effects of giving in your own life? Oh, in my own life. I mean, I started <laughs> um, giving a minimum of 10% back when I was, I think 17 or 18. Mm. Um, and that's when I learned about the principle and I'm not going to lie the first year or two was very hard for me because mm. you're right I had this mindset of well when I receive it it's mine and why yeah. would I you know want to give it and this is really difficult but then I I stuck to it and I cannot agree more with you it was it actually was miraculous how mm. how <laughs> when I would give it somehow found its way back to me 
and, I thought, and more usually with and more. friends. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. It's so weird. Whereas I thought, you know, I would feel like I had less every month. I didn't. Mm. Somehow, some way, it sh- everything stretched and was covered as if I didn't even mm. give that 10%. And so I completely agree with you, Jennifer. And there's nothing more, for me personally, there's nothing more rewarding in life than knowing that you can help somebody else who is in need. And mm-hmm. you know, I, yeah, I, I absolutely love what you've just said about helping, you know, for other people. I have a big passion for the homeless and that's something mm-hmm. that's been um, on my heart for many, many years. So to hear that is just mind blowing. And, I, and that's the same as us. It was on, you know, as a family at the start of the year, we decided that we wanted to help a particular, and I felt called to particularly help people who are poor or widows struggling in that. I felt yeah. that very close. And I think like that's just part of just the couple of months we've been able to do that. I, I can't stress also when I started to do it with our business as well. Wow. Again, and that is just because I know that people have entrusted me. You know, we, people often ask me and say, you know, oh, well, charity begins at home. And, you know, I give with my time. Absolutely. I'm going to assume if you're watching this, you are a giver anyway. You yeah. give with your yeah. time. You give, you know, it's no problem at all. That's just a given but it's this, like, what other resource could you give with? And I think money is the final resource that you might not have thought about. And it's also not really talked about because we don't talk about money. And it's not, I'm not disclosing amounts to you. I'm just saying, look, this is the ripple effect that even your business could help. Imagine, like, even if one other person gets to pick up a finance book or gets to to, to go to school or gets to have a home as a result of you helping people. Like what a legacy could, that's the best gift anyone could give really. Yeah, I completely agree. And that's why I wanted to speak about it in this interview, because, you know, it is such an important topic that's not talked about enough. Mm. And, you know, I I really think that everyone, no matter your religion or creed, whatever it is. It's for everyone. It's for everyone. everyone. That giving, Mm. that giving mindset, it's literally for everyone. And so, um, yeah, thank you for speaking to that, Jennifer, because it's important and you know I believe that everyone can benefit from it if everyone mm. was a giver I can't imagine what state our world would be in today yeah, it'd like, be yeah. quite different yeah, yeah exactly it would be it would be so this has been an amazing interview I've got one final question wow the okay. time so <laughs> I can chat you know <laughs> this you know this <laughs> I can as well I could just keep going um so any final tips or comments on people looking Ooh. to reach a place of financial independence time freedom mm. what would be your final words to them for today Ooh. That's a great idea. The the thing that probably I want to impress on people as my last thought would be, if you feel watching your channel, for example, you feel inspired, or you think, actually, I could do life a little bit differently, or, you know, I'm, this doesn't feel quite like the final picture. I would actually say maybe take some time today to actually get some quiet space, some paper, maybe a, a new journal, and write down how life would feel differently if you could design it. Like money was no object, it was coming in, you could be anywhere. So actually describe what life would look like. What time would you wake up at? Would you do, you know, some exercise? Would you be with the kids? What kind of things would you do as a business? Or, you know, how would you help people? Really get detailed and get excited. And I actually think that is where you allow your brain to start to look for opportunities to create it. I know that that's what happened Mm -hmm. in our life. I talked about, you know, on my channel that it was my second maternity leave and having all this debt, I felt stuck. I had no choice but to go to work with my husband. You know, we had to two big wages and it was paying off debt. Couldn't be with my boys. And it was that night I decided that was not going to be my story. Okay, and it might have taken us three years to get out of that debt, but that was not going to be my final story in the world. And so if I can do it <laughs> as a glass feature woman, you know, in that kind of day, I know anyone can. So don't assume right now is how life will always be. You have the power, you have the talents, change it, get that crystal clear picture, make it a goal. And, you know, I actually think it'll happen way quicker than you realize with a little bit of inspiration. And I'm not going to add anything in addition to that because that just ends Thank the you. whole inspirational talk. Thank you so much, Jennifer. No I really Thank you for having me. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope that you got some encouragement and inspiration from today's discussion with Jennifer. If you haven't already checked out her channel, then don't forget to head over to Mama Fur Fur and also don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. I've got lots of content on personal finance and my journey to financial independence. So I'd love to have you here and I really look forward to seeing you in the next video real soon.